Can we literally hurry? Hi! Welcome back to Gotta Be Me Podcast. <laughs> You're so warm. We're so happy to be here again with you today. Honestly, we're just getting so bored of our intro that we decided to do something else. Can you say your stuff now? Yeah. If you for like to comment and subscribe, thank you, all of that stuff. I don't know how you say it. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please boring. excuse the foolishness. I don't even know why we grabbed these random shawls out of our closet. <laughs> Good. So, I'm glad we did. Um, pray for us as we podcast today. We're praying for ourselves. And what do we want to talk about? <laughs> um, um, a school. The school that we work at. That's what we want to talk about. Today, it's a story that we want to tell you about, so we're going to tell it. Okay. No, we're actually just going to wiggle our toes. <laughs> we're not going to wiggle our toes. We're going to tell the story. So, and last year, one time, one time, we always had a dream that we wanted to be teachers. That was the thing. Like, ever since I was little, I wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> we're turning I'm into two years old. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> I'm not joking, okay? I'm not joking about the I wanted to be a teacher. I really did. I wanted to be a teacher. Bad and day. Bad, bad day at school, okay? So forgive us. Peyton, how long have you wanted to be a teacher for? Let's talk about that. I have wanted to be a teacher since I was... Honestly, I don't remember not wanting to be a, a teacher when I was really little, you know, we was all up in the church, so I always wanted to be a singer and never a preacher. I never thought, like, I could do both, you know? You had to be one or the other. It's kind of sad, though, because I'm not a good singer or a preacher, but I just do a little bit of both. both. <laughs> so it's sad. But, yeah, I feel like as a career, actually, when I was really tiny, I wanted to be a veterinarian, but I think I you said I wanted like to be... You animals. I hate animals. So, I, like, I, I'm sorry. I, sorry. I didn't mean to say that. But you still don't on like the them. podcast. But I was trying to say is I. But I would say sometimes like I would get mixed up between saying vegetarian and veterinarian, mm. and I would tell you that. But as far as my life, I think I've always wanted to be a teacher. I I was pretty little when I discovered I wanted to do that. So after we both graduated, we were going to we we were going to college. We're still going to college to be teachers. Well, I started going to college when I was sixteen. I might have already said that before, but I I, I just was really good at math. So I had finished all of my high school math by the time I, was, I finished it in 10th grade. And then for 11th grade, me and my parents looked around and we said, oh, there's no more high school math. So we said, well, there's a college right around the corner. Let's go. So then I kind of started my college there. And then I started kind of formulating more of a solid idea about what I wanted to do. And I didn't start college till I was like 21 because I spent a lot of time doing like mission work, basically, from the time I graduated till till that time but in that interim we both got opportunity to like work at our church schools mm -hmm. so they're kind of set up kind of like a homeschool but it's like homeschool co-op like it's organized there's system there's like they all we all come to one building type of thing mm -hmm. and but it's like the mom's teaching you know so we got opportunity to work there that's where we got a little experience and when I teach oh oh no our our, okay, our church schools are a little intense. Mm -hmm. I was 18 years old. I had just turned 18. First day of school, I told the teachers there, I like I like teaching. I like Bible. I like history. I mean, or social studies. And I like PE. And I like math. So those are the things I will teach. And so on the first day of school, I had a class of 9th to 12th graders, maybe 8th, 9th. I know there's like a 13, so yeah, ninth to 12th grader Bible class. And I'm, I was so nervous That's about crazy. it because I was looking at these big 17 year old boys like, what am I doing Trying in here? They're them. my age. Yeah. I taught 11th and 12th grade too when I was 18. I don't know why it always works out like yeah, that. that. That's messed up. But it was like still good experience, Super like good experience. learning. But I definitely enjoyed the fifth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders. Yeah, a lot middle school more. was really fun for me yeah. too. I still really like middle school. But I have to say, nothing can really prepare you. Nothing of that sort can, can. I don't think anything can prepare you for working in a typical public school setting except doing it. Like yeah, you literally have to do. Yeah, I continue to be shocked daily. Daily. So what happened was last year they called us, and they um, so there was a school that had really really low reading scores really low mm -hmm. and they were desperate for help and um rbe real black excellence 
is a community organization that was volunteering to help in the schools? And they said, sure. Well, so they asked us to come be a part of RBE and help with this endeavor mm -hmm. because, well, we've had a little experience teaching and um, we're going to school to be teachers. And this, this particular school has a very high African-American pop population. So they thought, you know, it'd be good to get some positive representation for the children yeah. because there's not very many African-American teachers in the school. So we there came... Was like yeah, when we when we came last year, there's more this year. Yeah, but when we came last year, there was one. And then the assistant principal. Yes. So we came within like a week of finding out about it. We packed our bags and came. Um, so what they did was they gave us a, <clears throat> a classroom all to ourselves. But there was six of us girls in this one room. And um, they gave us 10 of their quote unquote worst children. Um, that would be academically and behaviorally. And there's only nine weeks left in the school year. And they said, well, just see what you can do in nine weeks. Because these are basically children that were kind of wandering the hallways. Mm -hmm. Like, like what, they, they weren't in class anyway. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's why I think they allowed us to be an experiment with it. Because mm -hmm. it was like, a they're either doing nothing or doing nothing, mm -hmm. you know? And I think they could sense that we were okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to do something good. Right. So, we just went in there and did our best with them. There were so many behaviors and emotional issues. It was hard to get any instruction into them for the first like three weeks. It was crazy. We had then, two like, autistic children, one with um, ADHD, mm -hmm. and then also most of them were coming from horrible home situations. One of them is her mom had passed away. Another one, his dad was in jail. Another one, his dad had just got out of jail. His mom was not in his life. Another one, his mom had abandoned him. Like all of these, like one was homeless. One had no heat. One had no. It was like really no jacked up situations they were coming from. So they were coming to school, and we're also trying to feed them and give and, them. And we're I'm all of eighteen. Okay, I'm in here like, I, but I but I just left my house. You know, trying to. It was a really different experience, and we were dealing with crazy things every day. Children coming to the class screaming, throwing chairs um yeah that was like our second day there i remember feeling like slightly panicked because this child was just slamming the chair on the ground screaming in a complete mm -hmm. rage and i was like what do i do because you know you're not supposed to restrain the children at mm -hmm. all you know which <laughs> and then we had our what remember that one little boy that was always running it was so funny because he walks really slow he doesn't actually run so you never know he's about to leave he just sidles over to the door and all of a sudden boom he's gone it's like oh no he's in the hallways we gotta find him mm -hmm. so yeah. we were dealing with all kinds of issues and then at the end of the day you are like completely we were wiped, wiped out. out. We would get into because, the car. Because you get such an emotional attachment to them too. Mm -hmm. Like, what can I do so not to only make are them you feel doing better? schoolwork with them and teaching them, but you're like trying to give, you're trying to be their emotional support and you're trying to be, you know, you're trying to fill in for whatever they're missing. You're trying to be a mother, a father, a mentor, mm -hmm. a teacher, a nutritionist, like mm -hmm. everything. And it may not sound that, it may not sound that challenging because six people on 10, it seems like. And I think a lot of teachers are trying to do this. Right. And, and there's a reason the children aren't able to learn because that it's not fair to try to make the teachers do that for 20 children. Well, I realize every, like all 20 children are not normally at that same level of need, but mm -hmm. still. It's, it's kind of like a, not a good system yeah, for helping especially younger children learn. So that was a real challenge, but apparently we did something right because they asked us back the next year. So that's what we're doing right now, but it's a little different this year. So we're still, we're here at the same school, which by the way has improved greatly. Their reading scores have really gone up. They have an outstanding principal. They have an outstanding assistant principal. They have an outstanding master teacher and their teamwork there is fantastic. So things are really improving, Really, but... Um, tell about what you do. Uh, so we work as um, student engagement activists, and we work in the same room as other people that they would term interventionists. And basically, we're all sort of doing the same sort of thing in there. We're trying to help the children. Um, so they'll send the children that have really low testing math scores or reading scores, and they'll send them in for 30 minutes. And then we work to help fortify them on skills, mm -hmm. which I and think that's is kindergarten really kindergarten through fifth grade, which I think is really enjoyable. You get them fast, you know, they're glad because they get to get out of their classroom and come to groups, mm -hmm. you know, they feel all great about it. And then, <clears throat> yeah, you just get to help fortify them in that way. 
And it's great really because nice. it's like a small group, so it's much more personal. Even though you have a short amount of time with them, it feels like you can the really... The most I have is like <clears throat> five at a time. Yeah. And that's my biggest group. A lot of times, not a lot of times, sometimes I got one-on-one. -on -one. And then for one period of the day, I go help another math teacher, which is really nice because I would love to be a math teacher someday. So I get to observe her teaching, which is really nice as well. I like, I like, I really liked working in the interventions room. I did that too, a student engagement activist when I was first there. And it's really fun working with the children, like not, not qu quite one-on-one, -on -one, but like really close. I mean, you're sitting kind of at a round table, they're sitting around you and we're able to work off of standards, the state standards and just, you know, try to drill those facts into them and read with them, just practice. Honestly, so me, me. We, me and Camille, her sister, we've been on such a campaign to just make the children know their multiplication facts because we get so angry every day. Like Especially when fifth graders in don't know. the world, I get that they don't need to just memorize it. They need to know what is actually happening when you're doing two times three mm. is actually two groups of three or three. But honestly, at some point, two times three is just six, you mm. know? And when we're in fifth grade, see, I'm already starting to talk with you. When we're <laughs> in fifth when grade, we are in fifth when grade, we're in fifth grade, we will not <coughs> be doing There's that. There's some point where you just need to know. You know, I think a lot of times teachers don't have the time to take out to make the children just be like, okay, mm -hmm. well, we're knowing our also facts. let's talk about the fact that these are COVID children. So some of them, and especially since we're in such a low income area, some of them have never even some of them missed two to three years of school because if the parents weren't doing it at home, it wasn't happening. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's bad. So and you see there's it. that lack. And then, you know, and so we're still in this low-income area, so we're dealing with children, you know, they're coming to school hungry, which thankfully, you know, there's such a – I think, like, the percentage of our school that qualifies for free lunches is extremely high, almost 100. Um, but they're coming to school sometimes with heads full of lice, sometimes in the same clothes for days. Like, it's rough situations you, that they're coming from, you know what I'm saying? So there's always that to get past, too, before you can teach them. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, like I said, it's a challenge for any teacher to deal yeah. with 20 of that at one time. Anyway, I was going to tell what I'm doing. So one of the teachers was about to have a baby, and so they said, can RBE please send two of the student engagement activists into our room to sub for three months? So I went from teaching four to five students at a time to having 21 first grade students. Oh my, I feel traumatized. <laughs> and I know, and, and like thankfully the principals are like, oh, you're traumatized. <laughs> that's how every first year teacher feels good. That's normal. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like I feel so lost in there. I jumped in the middle of the year. You know, I'm not used to the curriculum. I've never even like all the times that we taught in the church school. It was the same, four to five students, you know, mm -hmm. maybe 10 max at a time. Yeah. So 21 is a whole different, right now I have 20, I have 20 students. And even it's with assistants, it's totally, totally different. And then this school, not this school, like I think just now public education, a lot of it's done on a computer. That's another, like. Which we didn't grow up. Doing at all. With at all. Which of course we do our college on a computer, but mm -hmm. for children, you know clicking buttons and it's hard to get them to do it right and mm -hmm. then and then they want to sneak over on YouTube mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy yeah. <laughs> and same thing again <laughs> dealing with a classroom full of children they're first graders but their age range is still kind of wide and um, dealing with all kinds of emotional issues and trauma and <sighs> I'm so thankful I'm getting to do it. Like, I feel like it's a super good learning experience for and me. I don't feel like many people our age get to just be jumping into schools like this and mm -hmm. kind of as much free reign as we have. i never heard of doing something like this before. As much free reign as we have. Like, we mm -hmm. can kind of do what we want to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're not, I mean, we need to, get, we need to provide scores. We may, need to make sure they do their, their computer work. But other than that, so. And if you watch any of other, our other podcasts, you know me and Sophia can start preaching. You know, we be preaching those children messages, <laughs> whole sermons up in there. They be like, oh, again, yes. yep, again, yes. again. I do not care. You need this. The you children know? literally say, oh, are you done talking yet? Nope. And guess what else? <laughs> but, Anyways, this was the podcast for all the people who are interested and more of our lives and listening to us ramble on about where our lives look like and, and what we're into right now. But unfortunately, yeah, sorry. Sophia, she's going to show podcast. off her cup. It's such a great cup. One of the other first grade teachers gave it to me for Valentine's, and I just think it's the best cup I'm ever. I'm very sad. I don't have a cup. I don't have a cup. If anybody feels bad for Peyton, you can go ahead and order her a cup. Yeah, please order me a cup. <laughs> That's how we'll know. Oh, and and Camille, 
our our sister slash cousin would like a cup as well. We all need she, cups. She never gets in the camera. She just always sits over there. One day we're going to You hear any her. coughing? It is her. Sneezing, laughing, or like random walks behind. Also, if your, rep if your comment gets replied to, also her. Like, if, if, especially if it gets replied to well and in quick order, you know she replies to it. Because <laughs> she's like, we always say like, we're like one person, the three of us. Like I know everybody that you see is just me and Peyton, but really there's a third one that makes up, we call ourselves the Trinity. Not okay. in any disrespect, but no. we Somebody's just, definitely gonna be offended by that. Please don't be offended. So we should like stop talking now. And I'm just gonna say that us. Okay. Well, y'all know what time it is. Peace, love, and hair grease.